Hey guys, uh, I'm going to talk about workflow and how to get the most out of Plus Design Build and how to start from scratch and the best tips to utilize when actually starting a model from scratch. And I think that my first tip is really, really important. You can see here that I actually have a, a set of drawings. It's actually a measure up of a house and I need to go through and draw it. And if I was a little bit gung-ho, I would probably start to just trace around it as I went, and then I would go back and start to make edits, which, you know what, I do do sometimes. However, when you've got a project that's, that you kind of want to get right the first time, I think what I'm going to show you now is going to help out a lot. So in this particular project, you can see that I've got green walls, I've got red walls, and I've got thicker walls, and, and so on. And... With every single project we do, we should have an understanding of ceiling height. If we don't, we would put one in at least, and then we would adjust things later. So instead of getting inside of the wall tool now, and just starting to, to choose a, a construction type, and and start to trace, I could go and click 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I don't know, 25 times, just to realize that I should have spent 5 minutes to actually get this right. So instead of tracing over the plan, what I could do is I could just go and draw one wall and I could have a look at that one wall and go, well, why isn't that wall correct? Well, then I could say, oh, okay, I didn't have a step down for my bricks. I didn't have a step down for my eave. So I could, without getting out of the tool, I can go back to my manual overrides, change my step downs for, say, my concrete and my eave and go submit. Is that what I wanted? Okay, it's kind of getting closer. Let's have a look at all of it. Okay, I've got my crown molding or, or cornice and everything turned on there. It's getting closer, but I chose the wrong type of brick. No problems. Material selections and finishes. Go in and choose the type of brick that you're going to use. Is that what I wanted to create? Okay. We're looking for the correct answers here. You know, what is it and how is it we're going to build? Instead of going and clicking 20 times around here, then realizing, then going back and selecting all and doing things, we should get it right. So once I've decided on what it is I'm after, I would then go and I would delete the walls that aren't correct. I would then go to my internal walls and I would choose how that internal wall is going to interact with the rest of my model. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to choose an internal wall and... I could go in and I could start to draw again because it's the same process. So there we go, put that internal wall in. Hold on. Oh, now I realize I only had my cornice on one side of the wall. I could have drawn all of those internal walls and then gone, ah, I forgot. So much quicker to do it like this and go in and go, right, well, my trim, I needed to be on both sides of the wall and on my internal uh, side. I can choose this, my, my sizes. And I can go through and choose my cornice or crown molding on both sides of the wall. I can choose my offsets, whether I'm going to have a trim end or not. I'm going to say yes on this, on the end. And I'm going to go in and draw it again. Is that what I wanted? Oh, you can see I still miss it. So these are, you know, genuine mistakes that, that I make and I use this every single day. So, but the benefit of what I'm trying to show you is that now I'm actually doing this, I'm finding my problems before I start. Okay, that's the wall type that I need. Let's get rid of the ones that I don't want. Now when I go around and start to draw, instead of going back to the wall tool, I can go and select these and go right click, walls, and create similar wall. All right. And now I would go around and start to trace around my, my project. I'm going to go to 2D mode here in Plus Design Build, guys. Uh, and I would then go and start to trace. Now I'm not going to go and trace all of them. I think you get the idea. But I just saved myself 20 or 30 minutes getting accurate by simply spending two minutes ensuring that the specifications of the wall and the type of wall were as per what I required when I started to draw it. Now, I just want to take this one step further. There's actually a, another thing that I think that all Plus Design Build users or Plus Spec users should do before they actually start getting right into any project 
is they should create a vignette. Now you've probably heard you know Nick Sonder talk about vignettes and you can purchase vignettes uh, from different things, but I'm gonna explain what a vignette is and why I would use a vignette and how I would use a vignette. Okay, so what I have here is actually a vignette and if I scroll in there, you'll notice it's like a cross-section elevation, but it's actually the 3D model. And the reason why I would have a create a vignette is that we can have different construction methods all go together to ensure that they work. And I want to make sure that my, my brickwork is at my correct drop-off for my eaves. I want to make sure the roof pitch and the overhang works out. I want to make sure that my subfloor area or crawl space is the correct height. And what I can do is essentially create these into components. So I can select this, go right click, and I can make it a component. When I make that a component, and I go up inside of my components inside of SketchUp and go in model, you'll notice that it has a component and I can go through and I can go through and go right click and save as. Now you can save this anywhere on your drive. I'm gonna save it inside of uh, my SketchUp components, but I usually save it to a drive so other people could use my vignette. And what happens is that next time I open SketchUp, I can simply go to my drop down choose vignettes or bathrooms or doors or anything like that and I can bring them in. You'll notice it's dropped one in there. Now, the benefit of this is that if I actually go and explode it, right click, explode, I can now go right click, oops, select an individual, right click, walls, create similar walls. That means that I can draw this construction method over and over multiple times. Same with the, the other walls. Walls, create similar wall, and really what it's done is it saved me a heap of time. And draw this up here, you'll see that it will replicate what's in the wall. Right? Guys, this saves you so much time, it's not funny. So creating a vignette by creating a component and saving it into your own library will enable you to get so much do more done in, in so much better times, guys. It's gonna save you heaps of time. And if you decided that you just wanted to increase the size of the roof, Go to the wall tool, simply change the size of <clears throat> your wall, or the height of the wall, or the type of wall, I'm going to throw it in three meters, and go submit. It means that I just need to grab the rest of this stuff and move it up three meters, and I can save that as a vignette as well. You'll notice that I've got my battens, I've gone up too far, 300, because it was a 300 difference. You can see what I'm about to do, guys. I probably don't need to get into that uh, too, in too much detail. I think you'll figure it out, but a vignette, uh, and setting up your typical construction methods and variations of will save you guys so much time that you'll be going, oh, happy days. I can't believe I didn't do this earlier. Anyway, guys, if you like the video, push like. If you dislike the video, push dislike. And if you have any questions, ask them below. If you dislike the video, though, tell us why so we can improve. Cheers, guys.